Hello, hello everybody. Today we are going to be continuing our Age of Calamity adventures. Last time we do, 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 do I do believe, I'm trying to remember my brain is fried. Because if I remember correctly, all we really did was like a uh, save... Daruk and Mifa. And then we also did like the first yeah, to Zelda's side memory diddly D, which then unlocked those. And then we did like that one, saving Daruk and Mifa, which unlocked their EX memories. And I did a few bits of grinding. I not I don't think enough to actually unlock anything new. I forget, what even are you? <laughs> Qualify for battle tested guardian trial. Which one way? Hmm, that's a little odd. I wonder why that's not unlocked. Oh, because ah yeah, they need to both be hit. So I guess I guess I'll hit that just because I can. Man, I thought I did more... Because I thought I did a lot of vicious monster thing to things. It felt like it. But I did a bit of grinding. Just a little bit. Hmm. But... I suppose... We shall grab some upgrades. We'll do some side quests. Hmm. Maybe we'll do a vicious beast one or once or twice. How much money do I have? A thousand. Because I do believe, yeah, the little thing is like, hey, go to the blacksmith. Probably because I have lots of weapons. Up that room of seals. Sell. Because we'll just go through and sell some high resell value. Weapons that anybody has, and then we'll say, 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 because yeah, most of these high resells won't sell for all that much, but hey, it's basically free money. Definitely need to look and see if there are any good seals to use for her bosa, because her weapon is floundering. Definitely see there. Hilarious that high resale maracas are actually really good. Still hilarious that his weapon is just rock roast. From YouTube chat, hello, hello, hello. We're just doing some quick inventory management. We're gonna grab some upgrades. And then do some quests. <laughs> Did a wee bit of grinding. First thing, we'll get Urbosa another special. Oh, I almost forgot. We were going to see about giving, see if we could find some good seals for Urbosa's weapon, as it's been languishing for a while. And we could get at least a little bit of a bonus from damage enemies less. Damage at full hearts. Damage at full hearts. Healing item drop rate. Why does Urbosa just not get my preferred damage per 100 KOs? Hmm. Like, I guess I could do damage from enemies just to give a decent bit of a bonus to everything. I guess we could. Now let's see if there are any, like, fusion experience weapons in here. There's no appear to be. Mm. Then we'll just power up Urbosa's sword a little bit. So she can do a little bit more damage. That. 
Like, even though I haven't used Riju yet, I really should use Riju. It's just that, my, again, my first impressions with her are like, ah, unwieldy, but all the other ones are super cool, so I just probably need to give her some proper chance. Well, let's get her both so that special attack gauge. The spa's new service. Grudo Town's beloved spa is looking to offer a rejuvenating new service for warriors weary from battle. Perhaps you can do something to support their expansion by just giving them all of my Hydra melons. Which is still That's hilarious that it's bad. basically just watermelon. In all the universes, watermelon is water plus melon. With the materials and budget lined up, the spa introduced its new offering, Massage. I totally butchered that. Massages. It sounds like Urbosa is looking forward to trying out the new service herself. For the power of massage. For the power of massage, she's able to unleash greater electricity. Which again, I wonder why she does have the ability to just snap lightning into existence. Well, I mean, the Gerudo have a lightning helm. So, who knows? Let's see, are there any other... Oh, a Master Cycle bonus combo. Should probably grab that, because I was looking around to see what other upgrades are lying in wait. And we should probably also get flail combos, because the game wants me to, like, do some stuff with the flails from YouTube chat. So, Neon, did you search up online about the anime Persona Trinity Soul? I have not, mostly because like, it sounds interesting, but there's just like so many shows and stuff that I already need to get to. Throwing in like, maybe in the future? I really should just keep a document of like, interesting things to maybe get to. Because there's just so many out there. So, so many. How the hell have I just completely missed an, a normal Impa bonus combo all this time? I thought I got all of them. I'm a fool. A fierce debate has broken out among the Kakriko villagers. Some think there should be outdoor lighting for safety at night, but others say that bright lights might interfere with people's sleep. Get them snails. With the power of snails, the world will be... The Sunset Firefly, a species indigenous to Kakariko Village, made for a perfect compromise. More fireflies made the streets brighter while also adding a soothing, sleep-inducing ambience. Let's give the Master Cycle a bonus combo. Princess Zelda isn't entirely used to the Master Cycle yet, but she's practicing hard. Provide her with what she needs to boost her stamina so that she can practice longer without getting weary. Goodbye all to my hearty radishes. Anything less than capable. You gave Princess Zelda the provisions and she happily returned to her riding practice. Long hours of training won't bother her anymore, so she is sure to become a masterful rider in no time. Still hilarious that they added the Master Cycle as a Zelda weapon. Oh. I need all the hardy durians I can get for him. <laughs> the squad's training retreat. The Hatino Defense Squad plans to go on a mountain retreat to do some flail training, but they don't have enough cooking supplies. There must be some way to help them. <laughs> Just give them all the stuff out of my pocket. <laughs> thanks to your supplies, the squad was able to have their retreat. As thanks, you can now try their new extra hard flail training course to learn a new technique. Which is just extra funny considering Robbie is just like, Only Link can use the flail. Only he's a bad enough dude to be able to do so. And suddenly other people are like, We're gonna go on a vacation of flail training. For the future. Sidon knows well that the children of Zora's domain will someday become its leaders. He plans to teach them the art of climbing waterfalls. But he needs a few treats to keep their attention. Even back in ancient Hyrule. Well, is it really ancient? It's basically been the same for 10,000 years. But even in ancient Hyrule, 
They have TikTok brain rot attention spans. Sidon's students passed his class of flying colors, and he gave each of them a delectable reward. The prince and his pupils vowed that they would strive to protect Zora's domain now and forever. Let's see, because we have stronger yet, some Lionel and Hinoxes. Took me a bit. Um, <laughs> and the same Lionel and another Hinox with Moblins. A feast for whiz robes. Anti-lightning training. That might be good to level some other people up. Strike it rich. That's a decent level. Territorial battle. Forest dance festival. Where you just fight everyone. He's like, ah, don't worry. It's not fighting. It's dancing. Ah, skellies. Hmm. I can wonder. Get okay, challenges. Ah! Here we go. We can actually see if there are any that we're missing from different levels and do them like level to level. Like anti-lightning training is the lowest level. Then who shall we do? Also, I did put Link in the Rito outfit because of course. Let's see, who shall we throw in? I guess I could do Riju, give her a chance to do things, because, like, I do like using all of the main characters, Link and Rivali especially, but even Impa, Zelda's fun, Mifa, Urbosa, Daruks, and then the, like, just, like, everybody. But, like, uh, the Monk, the Fairies, and Hestu, not all at the top of my priority. Well, let's see. Man, yep, that's still the uh, best weapon of yours. This is just... Da -da -da. Should be simple. Let us go and fight! See if I can use your special abilities. I'll need to look at your unique action. See what that's about. Unique action is very important for some characters. Excel at dashing attacks. Holds Zyar to send Patricia into a rampage. It's more difficult to control her, but her speed will be something to behold. So kind of like... Kind of, sort of... Like the overdrive. And let's see. One and combo. Summons Gerudos to help me fight. That's cool. I feel like that was all from that single one. Honestly, it feels like Riju might be a, like, normal attacker than anything. And then it seems like a three causes lightning storms. Crazy. It's almost hard to, like, feel out where the normal attacks end. Make Patricia angry and kill ya. Need to be careful of the chews, the jellies. How the hell a sand seal can just fly into the air with no problem is crazy. The chews just cause chain reactions of doom. Well, hello, I want to do this. I think it'll be funny. So she kind of does a version of uh, Herbosa's. But she needs the lightning helm to do it, which is funny. angry. Patricia does all the major damage. I will use lightning against the lightning. I almost took out the wizard rope entirely. 
But I do like that Riju fights with Patricia. Which is kind of funny. And it also highlights like a neat part of the Gerudo, the sand seals in there. Traversing of the sands. It's just like, I like that. We shall move along to defeat the electric moblins. The power of angry ship. Angry? Angry seal is here for you. I'll just go ahead and use this. I still stand by her being a bit unwieldy to use, it feels like. around you with the power of sand seal get flurry rushed by a sand seal another flurry rush for you faster than lightning it is a single Lazolfos has followed us to watch its big buddies be annihilated Here it's almost like Patricia is using Riju as the weapon. Alright, who's the next one? Who's the last one that must die? Yeah, that tracks. Well done, yo. Hilarious that he still just stood there and took it. Again, every single time it does a little back jump. I'm thinking that it's like actually doing a jump attack. And yet it's a little run forward. Never assume that that's going to be an attack. Got to get all the flurry rushes down. It's like he kicked him in the crotch. Dodge there was very bad. Oh. I don't think it's the same. Because it just had, like, an electric barrier and did not have the same, like, uh, oh hey, freeze it in time thing, like the normal Hinox. Dang it. The timing. Can do this again. Yeah, that one does not call for a stasis rune. That's kind of interesting. Dang it. My timing's very poor. It just spams this ability. Very rude. I'll take out your shins. Kick you in the crotch once more. There we go. <laughs> you know, it'd be interesting if, like, Hinox had a random drop pool, and then for, like, each random Hinox, the random loot was on its, like, necklace. I think that would have been a neat little touch. Not terrible that it's not there, but just, like, one of the interesting things about the Hinox was, like, ah, you see him in Breath of the Wild, and you see the stuff hanging on its neck. I just think that's neat. But at the same time, they already put so much from Breath of the Wild into this game. And be like, ah, oh, they could have put more details. Feels a little bit mean. I definitely need to use Flail Link, and copy enemy weapons, and then just annihilate enemies with the master cycle. God, there's just so many side quests. Add on top of the vicious monsters. There's so many. What's the one you're pointing me to? 
Apprentice Yunobu is not ready for that. Oh, and that gives like two diamonds. I wonder how many diamonds the actual upgrade things, like, actually use. Hmm. I don't think I'll upgrade you because I'm not really using the monk all that much. Well, granted, I only use it like once. Could give him some more chances, maybe. But then, of course, that would mean me I'd have to jack up his level. I haven't been using him. The one downside. Let's see. Hmm. Because Rishu is interesting, but very feels unwieldy. But I will give her a bonus combo, and then just her leveling up should give her a lot of health. Seal the deal, the classic pun of all the Sand Seal interactions. A young Gerudo Vi wants to create a unique charm for her pet Sand Seal. They're just gonna rip off Patricia. Just rip off completely. Give her unique materials she can use to craft something truly one of a kind using Lionel materials. Hilarious. Am I stronger than before? Placing the charm crafted from Lionel parts, they even admit it. That's actually cool. Parts around her sand seal's neck, the young Vi swore a solemn oath to protect Gerudo Town from any and all foes who dared to threaten it. Ain't she? What else? Could get bonus hearts for Sidon, bonus hearts for Sidon. I am kind of letting the fairies languish. They feel very clunky to use, personally. Oh, you know, boo bonus combo. Let's give him a combo. What's up here? A Daruk bonus combo. There's so many bonus combos I need to get. Goron rations. As part of Goron City's efforts to prepare for the calamity. Well, it's already here, I'm sad to say. <laughs> Preparing for the storm that's rolling off in the horizon, coming towards you. You know, Bo has been asked with the uh, task with bulking up the city's store of rations. Maybe something that non-Gorons will be able to eat. <laughs> I, at that point, you'd also need to store up a lot of like anti-fire elixirs, else it'll just like they'll burn up in there. Yunobo added a nice, diverse selection of foods to the Goron stockpile. That ought to keep everyone fed for a while. Naturally, sitting beside them is a rock roast almost as big as Hebra Peak. I feel like that'd be one hell of a big rock roast. And of course, the bonus combo for Daruk. To stand atop the lava. Daruk's got his mind set on a test of courage that's never been tried before. Standing atop bubbling lava! Help him prepare to achieve this seemingly impossible feat by taking the rest of my hydromelons. <laughs> Good stuff. Daruk stepped into the bubbling lava and survived. Even hot magma's no match for the great Daruk! He cried, galvanized by this volcanic triumph. He became an even mightier warrior. I was wondering why it was blue. Press X after a normal attack to create the pillars of lava that we can then explode. And then, oh, another Yunobo bonus combo. I've just missed all of them. Yunobo knows he has to eat well to grow big and strong. You're already as tall as Daruk. Taller even. In search of new flavors, he wants to try tasting a stone pebblet. That seems kind of, like, dark. The... the the pebblets are basically tiny taluses. Granted, we kill them with impunity, but like... It just, it feels weird. You'd be like, just pick up a pebblet, start munching on it. Seems freaky to me. But to catch one, he'll have to be really speedy. I'm getting stronger all the time. You know, Bo got a hold of a stone pebblet in no time flat. And in the subsequent tussle, he even learned a new move. He was so happy that he let the rocky creature run free. Hmm, territorial battle. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. I could just go to the... I'm just going to make sure any other... I'm just... I don't think this should work. Now let's read. 
Since the first hearing about the strange metallic creatures called Guardians, a budding Zora scientist is eager to study ancient Sheikah technology. But alas, he has no ancient materials. Here you go. Have the desiccated corpse of a Guardian. Impressed by the researcher's findings, Sidon recommended him for a job at the Royal Ancient Lab. After a warm welcome from his Sheikah colleagues, he eagerly threw himself into his work. That's very nice. Because, like, we mostly only see, like, Sheikah scientists, so having a Zora one is actually pretty neat. From you to Jad, I've noticed that the most occurring element powers that appear in most fantasy RPG games, it's always the trio of fire, ice, and electricity. Or I guess fire, ice, slash water. Mostly water. Because um, they put uh, emojis, and it looked like a block of ice, but I guess it's more water. Med brain fool. But that is true. It's probably because, like, there's probably a multiple, like, areas for it. Because I know that I think there's, like, I believe, like, I forget... Because, like, there's alchemical, like, elemental, what is it called, like, uh, designations. Then I think there's, like, different kinds of Japanese and Chinese, like, religion and mythology that also have their own, like, uh, elemental, like, uh, sets and interactions. So it's very much possible that most RPGs, like, especially because it feels like when it comes to elements, a lot of the time, elements really play a role in Japanese RPGs. Is because usually in, like, early Western RPGs, the elements are kind of all over the place of, like, ah, earth and grass as well. But when it comes to JRPGs, it is, like, really electricity, fire, and water. And it's probably because of taking those general elemental subsets and be like, hmm, that's a lot. Let's break it down to, like, a few. Also helps that, like, fire, electricity, and water are big, powerful, as well as very prevalent in most people's lives. And then if you want to get fancy, you can add on, like, earth and grass and stuff. But that would be an interesting thing to dive into, the history of elements in... RPGs across the video game and history. Strike it rich. Now, who shall we do here? Hmm. Well, actually, I should probably read and see what it has to say. It is said there's a place where many taluses like to gather, fight them, and defeat them, and collect some rare ore, too. So probably not a good place to use Zelda's Master Cycle. You know what we could do? Sidon and, or not Sidon, Mipha and Daruk, I say. I wonder how it would taste. That's great. Quite tasty. And let's -a go beat up some talises. And remember to stay hydrated. Lest the rocks just to take all your moisture. I still like that they just added in this random, like, loading screen activity. Because, like, in the, like, uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and, like, Wii U version, it was just like, ah, play, play the ocarina. Here, it's like, control the little guy. Time to destroy some peblets. God, there's a lot of peblets. Eh, <laughs> get flurry rushed, idiot. I think this is the most, like, peblets I've seen at a single time. Get blasted. Stone Talus? I guess I'll 
play Daruk a bit, get him to his stone taluses. Or at least to just stone talus. Singular. Keep just not stopping. He's just rolling, 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 unstopping. Dang it. Ooh, this one seems like it's going to be a very rewarding talus. It has the gold in it. Get blasted. And since I actually moved you, I'll direct you to the stone talus. I wonder, like, it would be amusing if, like, Mipha had, like, a bonus damage to Talos, because they're water. A road to the giant stone man. It's kind of interesting if they, like, intentionally hardened off champions for this one. I think my only gripe with Age of Calamity so far is the fact that the camera is kind of wonky most of the time when it comes to these big, big enemies. Just, like, very consistent on that front. No idea how that hits the, the weak point like that, but I'll take it. Explosions. Da -da -da -da. Get annihilated. You know what? I wonder if anybody's ever gone, like, matched up the general area that these levels are taking place in to Breath of the Wild maps. Some of them would be very, very simple to do. Other ones, I think, would be a bit more difficult. And I just think it would be interesting to see, like, what creative, like, uh, liberties the developers took when making the maps. Because a lot of them, like, all of them still feel Breath of the Wild, but I just think it would be interesting to be like, what, like, things did they add? Did they take away? Oh, darn, I probably should have fought that vicious monster. Then again, I think this one's actually very easy as well. It's like, <laughs> level up your people. Oh, <laughs> I guess it'll be very easy. Level 63. Level 67. We're not doing any vicious monsters just yet. Let's see. There's just a lot here. A feast for whiz robes. Fire dances and ice pours down, all while thunder roars. It is said there's a place where all this happens at once, but what could be going on there? His robe's just going crazy, having a dance party rave. There's also another set of elements in most fantasy series. The four elements of earth, water, fire, and air. I think that one aligns a bit more with, like, medieval alchemy, I want to say. I'm not too learned. I did. It's very interesting. Because, like, there's multiple different, like, elemental, like, sets from different places around the world and, like, different, like, religions. So it's like, it would be interesting to look into that. <laughs> now, that's a video essay that I could watch for, like, three hours. That's basically just, just, why are elements in video games like this and so often? Just a big history lesson disguised as video game essay. I think that'd be amusing. Let's see... And I think we'll play as... Yeah, we'll play Mipha again. Mipha's fun. Mipha's a fun character to play. It's also interesting with elemental things across various media, because sometimes ice is its own thing, but sometimes ice is a subset of water. Sometimes earth and, like, vegetation are two different things. Sometimes they're bundled together. It's like, very interesting. 
Sometimes it's just rock. Sometimes it's rock and plants. <laughs> Defeat all the whiz robes. Freeze you. That makes me think now, like, or not think, but like wonder what the very first video game to use elemental distinction was. Because elements have just been a big thing in media just all over the place, which now makes me wonder when, like, what's it called, uh, D and D, like, actually added elements and stuff. Because that's a big thing, like, now. Like, ah! Like, if you're, like, a, I think a draconic sorcerer, you can select your element and you get bonus for using, like, spells that match your element. Granted, I've never played D&D. &D. If I ever did and I played a draconic sorcerer, I would hope that my DM would allow me to, like, homebrew slightly of, like, ah. Or, like, give, like, allow me to use a, like, replace a sorcerer class feature for leveling up to make it so I could change the elements of certain spells to match my chosen one. I think that'd be neat. What even are whiz robes? It's like they're naturally occurring elemental freaks. Get flurry rushed, idiot! You thought that you were a nice boy that you could escape your fate? I wonder why specifically all the whiz robes really like to be hit by bombs. They don't really care about getting frozen. Oh, well, that's just mean. Crain a hailstorm. And now my brain just immediately reminded me of the pirate metal band Ale Storm. Their songs are really good. I recommend them. They're fun. Get interrupted, idiot. But as time goes on, I'm just keeping good, uh, you know, grammar, do I even? But I just keep getting reminded of various, like, game series I need to play. Like, Ratchet and Clank, that's a big one. Especially because the latest Ratchet and Clank game that came out, I believe, for the PlayStation 5 and then was ported to Steam, Rift Apart, looks really good. Need to play him. There are too many games in the world. That was too close. You quit fire bombing me from across the map, you freak. And now, come to think of it, I wonder if there are any games that, like, would appear like they should have elemental interactions, but then just don't. Like, say, this game as a rough example, because it's right before me. Mipha should totally have advantage against fire whiz robes, but then to be fair to the AI, you'd have to go, oh, but now we have to let the AI get bonus against the, the Zora with like electricity and ice. Which would disproportionately affect, <laughs> disproportionately affect the, the Zora characters uh, out of everybody else. Please explode those bombs. I cannot fail. Ha <laughs> <laughs> That exploded so much 
it slowed the game down for like a good five seconds. Like, not even slow down, slow down. It basically paused while not being paused. The Nintendo Switch 2 cannot come any faster. I hear the rumors that uh, people are assuming a... Well, I guess it's less rumor and just people are assuming... that, uh, I'm getting distracted because I'm being attacked on all sides by Satan! But in general, people seem to be assuming that a Switch 2 announcement tell-all kind of thing is gonna happen next month in October. Which I wonder where that even starts. <laughs> Although this also reminds me of a funny like, uh, Twitter account that I don't follow, but I probably should, because it's funny, where it's basically totally legit game leaks. And it's just stuff like, the Nintendo Switch will have buttons. Just very obvious, funny aha things. Which also reminds me of a... like, a uh, other... like, a uh, less... Well, I forget the overall circumstances, but I remember it being an event where apparently there was a... Ah, uh, game leak prediction Twitter account that uh, was revealed to have just been a person who, like, would private the account, make a bunch of, like, uh, different tweets, like, this thing will happen, this thing won't happen, and then they just delete the tweets that were inaccurate and make the Twitter profile public again, or something like that, which is just crazy. The with the... The lengths people will go for clout. A vicious presence has fled. What do you mean that a new heart art icon appeared? What do you mean? What? Oh, I guess we defeated the Wisrub so hard we got an upgrade thing. Increased rod uses by one. Which, to be fair, is actually pretty good. You hear that someone is researching Wisrub rods. Gather materials that will help the researcher with the elemental study of these items. Perhaps the rods have undiscovered power. It turns out they were a Wisrub themselves! The researcher was able to finish his study. He failed to find any extra powers of the rods. At least you learned more about them and could find the rods even more useful in the future. Oh! And then anti-lightning training. Or like, basically anti-elemental trainings popped up more. It was just like, why did more show up? Escape the Lost Woods, level 35. Let's see. Let's play Daruk. He'll go smash all the scallies. Break their bones and make them into scones. Daruk the alchemist. He turns bones into, like, bread cakes. Daruk. He just summons lava blocks and makes them explode with his mind. <laughs> like the motherfucking pancakes. Explodes pancakes of mind meme. Oh, that's cool. Get frozen. And now on the again on the topic of like uh, elemental stuff in video games, I wonder what it would have been like if the core trio of elements in Pokemon wasn't fire, water, and grass. 
It would just be very kind of weird. Just because of how ubiquitous all that is nowadays. Which also reminds me I definitely need to get back to playing my Pokemon again sometime. So I last played Pokemon Platinum. And I definitely need to go, and I believe I chose Pokemon Black as my, like, uh, next entries that I'm going to aim for. Oh, yeah. Nothing to Beat up the style, Moblin. You ugly hoe. I smash your bones in bullet time. Oh, I picked the wrong thing. I like the fact that Daruk just cartwheels over enemies. Attacks, he's like, you can't hit me. He's the great cartwheeling Daruk. Get out of here, Octoroks. You fiends. So yeah, this is probably a maze. Like here, can I go through this? Nope. So we go around, maybe. Because <laughs> I was getting a feeling of like, hmm, this is feeling a bit too easy. Stop that. Right this entrance. Right this entrance. Right this instant. Now you stop that. Get Hulk clap. Round of applause for you. Now please die. So close. And now you get annihilated. Oh, that's actually a cool detail. When he does that rain down the rocks thing, he actually summons his uh, defense so that he doesn't get hit by the, his made lava bombs. I just like things like that. I will take this time to destroy each and every stall moblin because I can. I also like that it seems that there's, like, a specific endgame, like, a uh, combo that stuns enemies slightly and does a little bit of chip damage to their, like, a uh, weak point. Which is just very nice. I'm so happy that I got that, like, flinch upgrade. Where I could take one hit and not just get stun locked by out of sync Octoroks. There's a lot of Octoroks. Hey, perfect timing. I have two of these to use on you. Ah, there we go. One round of weak point smacking down. Ding. Very rude, Stall Knox. You're being very rude. A rude boy, even. Explosion. I keep forgetting that that's actually an attack. It just running at me like a toddler is an attack. And I will use my second special ability bar. Goodbye, Stalmox. You were easier to kill in this game than the other one. 
I roll away. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Now I wonder what the, like, inspiration for the Goron was. If I remember correctly, they originally, like, uh, came in Ocarina of Time. And not any of the other earlier ones. At least I think so. Which I also guess I wonder, like, what specific inspiration made, like, the Zora appear? Otherwise, it's just kind of like, ah, fish people. Now, rock people, that seems a bit out, like, a bit more out there. Win back the mighty bananas, and in the clutches of the Yiga, a massive supply of mighty bananas has been stolen from Gerudo Town. The party attacks the Yiga... Uh, the party attacks the Yiga clan hideout seeking the bananas, but they must first deal with Master Koga's trap. This feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> in, like, the best way possible. All we'll right, send in Urbosa. And you know what, Limpa as well. Yeah. Urbosa and Impa. This looks quite satisfying. I feel the same. Like, this feels like something in a Saturday morning cartoon show where the devilish villain would just steal all the bananas. And so there's this big epic raid of the villain's base. That it almost feels like a serious finale, all because they stole the bananas. An episode of He-Man, where Skeletor just steals all the bananas. And it's just outright war after that. <laughs> oh, I was wondering where I was. I was looking at uh, Impa's icon on the map. Looking at completely the wrong thing. Why do they have stalls? Why do they have the skeletons? Like, normal monsters, sure, but stalls just seem weird. Now, minions, let us carry out the plan! Reminds me, what are your new like combos? A one, two, three, four, double. All right. One, two, three, four. All right, that's awesome. I don't even really know what I'm doing. I'm just pressing buttons and things are happening. Nope, I'm going the wrong way. Give me your rune. Me, I have a base to consume. Oh, I can't. I have to kill the Lionel first. So I guess, uh, yeah, you can stay there. How dare you be outside your cage. Get beat up, Lionel. Haha, <laughs> get flurry rushed. Fighting the Lionel in a hallway. Suboptimal. Just <laughs> violently shoving the Lionel around. Well, right as I was just trying to get back to 
the normal place. You can come to me, Lionel. Just raise it right in front of him. Right from under him. For some reason, I'm just getting really good flurry rushes on the Lionel today. Just really good today. Some days are better than others when it comes to flurry rushes, and I don't know why. Today is a good one. Meanwhile, I was having terrible flurry rushes against the Inoxes. I'm just... I just know, like, the last one that would guarantee my victory I'm going to miss. Or that could happen. Because the rune decided to be mean. I see that and I get away. More flurry rush. If only I was good at flurry rushing like as in like if only I was good as flurry rushing in actual Breath of the Wild as I am in Age of Calamity. I just get, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get good. Don't think I've ever seen that before. Badass. Completely badass. And we got the Lionel guts. Oh, fine. Half the time limit remains. They can take him back. Steal yourself. I am ready. Get exploded. It's time. Actually, you go defeat the Eager Blade Master. See so yeah, if I have full runes. Goes crazy. Give me your runes. I wonder how many bananas this is going to give me. The Yiga clan seems to give a lot of bananas. Wrong way, I'm a fool. Well, that's very rude. I'm just getting my third rune. I shall now destroy you. I destroy you again. Where's Master Koga? Because I can still attack, so... <laughs> you chumps really think this is over, don't you? Yeah. Oh, technically we've got, like, the best place. Don't let him go stealing. Very rude. I summon lightning indoors. On you. Don't want these guys, like, getting out there and retaking more. Well, I don't think it would matter. We just have to beat them. My brain's just locked on, like, oh, they could take outposts again. Don't let them. Them taking outposts are bad. Get blasted. Wind powers mean nothing to me, Yiga man. Get frogged. A worthy Steal yourself. I am ready. 
Oh, now we fight. Koga himself. Enough is enough. I'm gonna personally ruin your day. Throw a force field at me. I throw a bomb at you. I, I build bombs on top of you. I'll do it again because I can. Get blasted. just taking a lot of beating up in here. Ah, oh, darn it. Personally, I think if I'm locked on to an enemy, like, I just feel like me like being locked on and activating the rune should take precedent over like the enemy like doing stuff. So just like some of the placement of the runes are very poor. Depending on like certain factors. They're actually kind of a threat. Actually, quite impressive, all things considered. Get frogged, Koga. We have beaten him. Didn't even throw him into the hole. Oh, a rusty weapon for somebody other than Link for once. That's new. That probably would have been a great place to use uh, Zelda's Master Cycle. I am a fool. But we've been going for about an hour, so we should definitely do a story mission. See what's happening in Akalo. Well, what do you want me to do? You want me to do the fruit for the princess? Huh. Which is a Link and Impa only. Well, let's see about Relentless as a Waterfall. Kind of wish that I could have, like, battle details. It's interesting that all of them are, like, selectable. Anybody can be here. Well, as always, right, Link will be our main. Volley second. And you know what? I Mifa and Daruk. Just stick with me, okay? And then... First things first, though, we'll go to the... You. Weapon place to see if we can upgrade the other's weapons. See if there's any... Fusion experience. Does not appear to be any... Fusion experience. Mm. Let's try to get him to another emblem. Which will also coincidentally get him out of. Oop, ah, that's it. I have to select a good thing. Only downside is I haven't really been curating mm -hmm. <laughs> Daruk's <laughs> emblems. But oh well. And then to Mipha. First things first, see if there's any fusion experience 
weapons to throw in. There's one. And we're almost there for getting another emblem on there. So let's try and find that. There we go. Because we can, once we get like a, a overstock of weapons, or like just resources in general, we'll be able to really put whatever emblems we want on any weapon. It just takes a lot of resources. But let's go. Relentless is a waterfall, even though uh, actually Mifa and Daruk are a little underleveled, but that shouldn't be a problem. Should not be too much of a problem. It would just be punishment for me for not uh, playing them as much as I should have. Utterly horrifying. We don't stand a chance of defeating them. And what's more, our chances of rescue are slim to none. And it's likely the same. Really, it's impressive life. that if Robbie did fall back to Akala Citadel, that he'd survived. In the actual timeline. Yeah, I guess Lizalfos could climb. People are coming to help us. A divine beast from the western waters. Ruta. See that? What did I tell you? With the help of those who had traveled I forgot that Rome time, isn't narrating anymore. The fated party fought with all of their strength to fend off the unending waves of guardians and monsters. Despite their efforts, Hyrule remained embroiled in a grueling battle. It's basically all out war across the entire country. The soldiers stationed within Hyrule Castle fled, seeking refuge in the east. In the impenetrable walls of Ocala Citadel. Impenetrable indeed. As guardians swarmed the perimeter, they held out hope and waited for help to arrive. Which just makes canon timeline all the more depressing. Link and the others hurriedly made their way to the Citadel. Meanwhile, having reclaimed Varuta, Mipha and Sidon faced the enemy directly, forging ahead to the tower. I really like how they're using the Divine Beasts in this story. Like, as actual things to clear out a bunch of monsters and bring war to the Calamity. Especially because it just felt like, oh, we're just going to use them as big battering rams against Ganon in the main game. Here are their actual weapons of war. Prepared, Sidon. We shall carve a path to Akala Citadel. Head for Akala Citadel to support. The Citadel is surrounded and is soon to fall. Sister, we must make haste. Ah, the road forks here. The western road looks perilous, but it's our swiftest path to the Citadel. The eastern path takes longer, but has plenty of water, which would give us the advantage. Well, you know me. I ain't afraid of no monsters. I'll take the western path. I also do really enjoy how... Like the the beasts theme are also all unique and using repeated motifs. It's just very nice. Monsters everywhere, and without Varuta, we could not take one step forward. Too true. For the sake of our soldiers, we must first thin their numbers a bit. Already at 2,000. Defeat is not an option. The very future of the kingdom depends on us. 
fine, I'll do this since you're being angry. Indeed, for the sake of Hyrule's future, let us fight on, dear sister. Well, at least I did take out a bunch of monsters. Who needs water when I can just annihilate the enemies? Just a fuckle of citadels just ahead. Give it your all. Hang in there, Varuta. One more push. I also really like that, like, technically, like the uh, other characters that help you board the Divine Beasts sort of, sort of play the role of the champions in the canon time, like Tiba, Sidon, and everything. Meanwhile, in this timeline, they're actually boarding the Divine Beasts and helping with the war. I just think that's neat. Because that's just not something that was in Breath of the Wild. Perhaps we chose the wrong path. There's no other time the long way around, however. Sister. Destroy the wall, dear sister. A divine friend here should make quick work of it. Make way! To Akala Citadel! To Rain Watery Hell! Link and the others should be headed for Akala Citadel too. We can all rendezvous well, there. Yes. There are still enemies within the Citadel. Let's save our friends! Relentless as a waterfall. Booyah! That might have... Oh, well, it depends. Because for a moment, there's like, oh, that might actually be a good, like, mission to grind. But that's just the first part. <laughs> it was like, oh, that seemed to go really fast. Gave us, like, a thousand rupees. Meanwhile, we haven't even gotten to the main segment of the, <laughs> the mission yet. I also just... I still really love the, like, little artistic hieroglyph silhouettes. Of all the characters. It's just neat. Akala Citadel, an impenetrable fortress forming the core of the Akala region's defenses. It rises high above the land, armed with ample cannons. Haha, <laughs> get blasted, idiot! We shall cover the perimeter. And we'll join you as soon as we can. <laughs> Meanwhile, I chose me for the join us immediately. Sister. We can do this. Right. Sidon, it's an honor to fight beside you. I'm so proud of the Zora you've become. He's wielding Remember. tridents that are bigger than her. I will. Dual wielding, even. Now it's time to focus on the fight ahead. You're ready for this, right? I love Mitha's theme. It's of so course, nice. Sister. Link will head down that away. While Ravali will head up to fight the Guardians. <laughs> Just basically completely flipping what they wanted from me. And I missed the first, like, uh, line of the mission from Zelda there. Oh, yeah. Sister, leave the Northern Guardians to me. You and the others, head for the Citadel. Oh, he's actually, like, acknowledging that Mipha's on the mission and not in the Divine Beast. That's cool. 
I wonder what happened if I chose both Sidon and... <laughs> and Mipha for, for this mission. I'll take you down, Guardian. Love the music that's playing. I refuse to abandon them. We will aid them. Of course we will. Hold this choir. I don't need to bomb you. I'll bomb you anyway. But with arrows. is here to destroy you all. Oh, you, you just completely missed. How dare you. Yeah, you stop that. Man, this place isn't just war torn. Be still. It's insane. Heck, get obliterated, Guardian. This is why Rivali is the best. Although, granted, if I leveled up Hestu, even he could annihilate Guardians like that, which is also kind of hilarious. The music is so good. You're finished. <laughs> now make way, dear moblin. Well, not moblins, you're bacoblins. Watch I shall take down. you out. You stand a this is a really sweet future deciding getting to stand together with his sister. Exactly. It's also kind of, like, sweet in the way that Sidon can remember the cala calamity. He lived through it as a child. So it's just kind of crazy. In a way, it's almost like Sidon probably has had this kind of dream before of being able to use his current strength as a full-grown Zora to go back in time and save his... Oh, use Mipha to approach the captain? That's... That's cool. That, that's a specific thing. Hold on, I will treat your injuries. The soundtrack is fantastic. It is. Oh, my body's knitting itself back together. Thank you, and please, if you could, help my fellow soldiers in the Citadel. First, let's try and clear out the gathered enemies, the Silver Bacoblins, just ever so slightly. That's just extra neat that there was, like, a character-specific thing. I guess it kind of makes sense because they kind of account, like, hey, if you're going to use Mipha on this, like, mission, 
when she was originally meant to be in the Divine Beast. Why not? What the hell? Guardians are from the Citadel. Let's join forces and break through, and it's a fire one. I haven't seen one of you before. You stand a chance. They just went all out for this game, and I love it. It just has a great story. It fleshes out the characters more. It's just... Again, it is the best kind of fanfic. And it's official. I love me official fanfics. Link, now that you're here, I know I can face whatever comes my way. That's just sweet. I didn't need the help, but I suppose I should thank you. Character development. All inside, quickly. We will retake the Citadel! Out of the way, Silver Moblin! Again, that's just... Sure. What a relief! We can move freely! We'll clear the rubble away! Everyone, please protect the Citadel entrance. I will venture further in and do what I can. Oh, specifically use Mifa. I like that this is, like, highlighted. Mifa, with your healing power, we should be able to save everyone. We'll leave this to you. <laughs> no pressure anything. You can save everyone. Get bombed, Wizrobe. But this is just so cool. <laughs> You're in the same exact place? At least it feels like it. Like I did another mission where there was a Korok right there. <gasps> Report! The southern gate has been infiltrated! Hmm, the southern gate has been infiltrated. I guess we'll have to wait and see what that does. It's become a... Salt. Keep an eye on the health of guarding the square. I guess Link can head back down there. A black Hinox. Ah, get flurry rushed. Not sure if I fought one of you before. Ah, another flurry rush. I'm getting all the rushes today. Go ahead and use my special bar. I cannot go. How did a Hinox even get in here? Yeah, <laughs> another flurry rush. Hell yeah. as possible. Fear not, I can heal you. That's still so cool. And now we'll <gasps> jump to you to the 
defeat you. Come to think of it, Master Robbie was on the higher floor. I hope he's still okay. I am not loving those numbers. I shall hold down the reinforcements. The remaining foes are yours. I shall send Link to intercept. Since the old top part has opened up, take them down, and then I'll go to the parade grounds. Maybe. Someone, please help me! I'll just destroy you now. <laughs> I'll take this from all of you. Get bombed, idiot. My powered up bombs take you all out. Take them all out. Get blurry rushed, idiot. Obliterated. Thank you for protecting the Citadel. Here I can mend you. Hello there. Thank you, Lady Mifa. I will return to protecting the square. It's still so cool that there's just like an additional objective for choosing Mifa for this mission. Cease, Ice Moblin. Now to find Robbie. I like this, like, specifically use Mipha to rescue Robbie. Oh, you've come to save me? Hang on, uh, opening the door. Yes, yes. Ooh, you really saved my day. Although I feel something coming from nearby. Oh great, a corrupted guardian. Heavily corrupted. Yeah, how about I stop that? <laughs> As I was sending Link to stop them all. They're heading in anyway. Oh, well, well, didn't mean to go this way. The 
definitely need to get Link back to the square. If I was smart, I would have sent Mipha in and then had Rivali go down. Oh, Daruk! Sorry for the delay, folks, but we're here now and ready to roll. I'll wait to be able to control him. Which is apparently not coming. <laughs> You're more like attacking your own guys there, Guardian Man. I shall just destroy you. Oh, and then Rivali and Mipha both came back. That's a fool. Rook has broken through the enemy horde. Thank you for bailing us out. We'll have a new lease on life, everyone. Don't squander it. I've got this place covered, princess. You go help Mifa. Yeah, because now... That's neat. It's almost like I chose Daruk to def. Well, no, yeah, because I use. Uh, yeah, I chose Daruk. So it's almost like I chose Daruk to defend rather than actually play us in. That's actually cool! That makes me wonder what kind of combinations for champions and stuff would be here. Like, if I chose Hestu, what would the dialogue have been? Well, I think I completely abandoned Robbie to the malice monster. Completely by accident, I assure you. Because I forgot to reset Mipa's, like, location tracker to specifically the Robbie place and not the intro, or, like, entrance, not the intro. Oh. Get flurry rushed! And then I get hit immediately after by a basic attack. Usually those heavy wind up overhead attacks hit me when I try to flurry rush them. Hey, we got a great eagle bow. I think that's normally just the... Like Rivali's bow. He got a... <laughs> he's got a, a clone now. Mipha, I'm so glad I made it. Let's join together and strike them down. Everyone's friends in this. Princess, you came. Now we can fight them side by side. Mipha says that she's very far away, for I am a fool. But this is just very, very cool. Like, imagine if there was an Age of Calamity anime. I think that would be neat. I just really like the character stuff in this. It's so good. Hello, Malice. I've been busy. I shall blast you again. So, Neon, do you know any fiction that have time travel in its story? I've watched a series that's about time travel in Doctor Who. Doctor Who is like the main time travel 
show. Even though if most of the time the time travel is kind of incidental and not like a major driver of the story, the time travel is usually just like, uh, ah, we time traveled and not, oh, something happened because of time travel, though that still does happen. But when it comes to stories that have time travel, there's like Back to the Future, but I haven't watched that in a long time. The Terminator, that's always a classic. Let's see, what other ones? There's a lot of time travel stuff out there. I guess technically uh, Sonic 06 is a time travel story. Whoa! You see my skin! Thank you very much! Horde of Ace has appeared and launched an assault on the Citadel. Well, at least we can get back there quickly. Right, if you draw the enemies to the bridge, we'll destroy the enemies on it with the Citadel's cannons! Trying to think. So there has to be like a decent amount of like actual. Actually, you know what? There we go. Sorry, little guy. And then have Link. Now that would just cause a loop. Oh, and then there's more. Yeah, definitely very well. Actually, Rivali, you go take them. Go to Link. Oh, I could just do that to move them around. Like, I feel like there should be, like, more time travel movies and stuff that I know about. Yikes, enemies are making it over the bridge. Hurry and stop them! Watch and learn. You stand a chance. The one downside of uh, time travel is that sometimes it can make the, like, uh story be a little bit clunky. But well, that's just how things go sometimes. Oh, who knew piloting the Divine Beast would be such a workout? Sorry to know you all right, but we may not be able to rely on Baruta anymore. That's why we have <laughs> the cannons. Do you know about uh, aliens and monsters that come from Doctor Who? There's a decent amount like the Daleks, the Cybermen. Did it see? Technically, the Slavine, even though they're very, very small overall, overall. Like, only a certain amount <laughs> of time do the Slavine actually, like, show up. What other one? So this is again a decent amount that are all over the place. <laughs> Although I do find it funny that like uh, some of them only like some of them feel like they should be much bigger, like and important to the world, like uh, in the. I believe eighth episode of the first series of the reboot. There's the what are they called? I, don't, I completely forget what they're even called, but they're basically just time demons. And like, ah, oh, you caused a paradox. They're here to wreck your day. Only in that one episode, they never appear again. Just kind of funny. think that a time travel show like Doctor Who would summon like the time bacteria we're here to pick the time wound clean guys 
Weeping Angels? Of course I know the Weeping Angels. They're very, like, they're probably the best new who, like, alien. They're just very creepy. Their debut episode of Blink is very good. Which is actually hilarious because it just, like, hardly has the, like, uh, doctor in it. Those are always the very impressive episodes where they're able to make the episode good even when the Doctor isn't really the focus in the episode. It's just always very impressive. I still find it funny that originally Doctor Who was supposed to be like a history show. Of like, ah, we'll use time travel to show you history. And then it just went all the crazy praises. Yeah, words are just slurring. Get across the bridge. Annihilate them. Sorry for the wait. Preparations are complete. Fire the cannons at will! The cannons are ready to fire. Looks like we got them in our sights. And fire! And there goes the bridge. Hey, just kind of like in canon. The results are astounding! They are mere fish food now! Is that racist with the uh, Zora here? Time to strike down the remaining enemies. Let's glide down from the cliff into the exercise yard. Oh no, this is gonna be badass. Everyone. Follow Mifa. I always have to get that sound note of like confirmation or else I think like, oh, did it not actually work? Send everyone down there then. Manually. Little guy. <laughs> Little guy. That's that's cute. Although come to think of it, I think the weeping angels are actually decently well I wouldn't say underused. But they're conservatively used. Because I think, like, uh, they only show up once for David Tennant, and then twice for, uh... Bubba Buff. For the boy, Matt Smith. And I forget if they showed up for... Like, uh... Peter Capaldi at all. Or the Lady Doctor, I forget her name. The actress's name. With this, we were able to defeat the enemies. I'm so glad we succeeded in defending the Citadel. Commendable, Sidon. You deserve our thanks, as does Vaz Ruta, of course. Fantastic. No, sister. The glory is yours alone, as expected. Without you, those soldiers would have perished. Thanks to everyone's hard work in the Divine Beast, we were saved! Thank you, thank you. This was a very fun mission. We basically get 2,000 rupees for the whole mission. Ooh! Fusion material plus 250% for the ancient battle axe. And Great Eagle Bow. Yep. Wielded by Ravali. Very cool. And a plus plus 13% battlefield specific material drop. A lot of rewards there. But now I'm interested in wondering, like, how many times the Weeping Angels have shown up 
in Doctor Who now. I wonder if they're like super used in like side material comics and the audio dramas. Although, <laughs> although Weeping Angels probably wouldn't make for like the ultimate best audio experience since they are very visual. Would have to go like, I am looking at it. It is looking at me. <laughs> It'd be kind of hard to... So many. So many. Earn recipe for fairy tonic. Earn recipe for meat pie. And an EX, which is... EX row to Akala Citadel. And it's just like a side mission. <laughs> Level 67. And then EX, Ancient Threats, time limited. Very interesting. Territorial battle. More stuff with Teba. A bonus combo and a bonus combo. We will set that. The Strongest String. A renowned bowyer in Rito Village has a technique for making bowstrings more resilient but it calls for Amaranth to gain an edge in the battles ahead. Seek out the rare plant. Luckily, I have lots of it. I have further to soar. Training for hours with his newly reinforced bow, Teva thought up a new move. Now he's itching for the chance to use it against monsters. Let's see, does that take a lot? That does take a lot of those resources. And what's this? Oh, him, yeah. I was wondering what that was for a moment. Link bonus hearts. Ooh. Ability to increase max weapon revel. Oh. A weapon maker in Zora's domain got roped into construction on a stone monument and has no time to work on weapons. Help him find materials to finish the monument. Luckily, I was annihilating a lot of... Wow. Good job. B -b -b ...linos, so that works well. The monument was finished ahead of schedule. The Zora were grateful for your help. The weapon maker was glad of it too and showed you a Zora smithing technique. Smithing's best of the best have gathered. You can now raise the maximum level of your weapons at the Hylian Blacksmith Guild. I wonder if that meant like... They expected me to max out my weapons at this point. <laughs> You to chat. You've given me the impression you have a general knowledge about the universal lore of Doctor Who. Kind of, sorta. I watched like uh, all of Nine's run, Ten's run, Eleven's run, and I only know bits and pieces of Peter Capaldi, the Lady Doctor. I basically only know the like series of specials leading up to like, uh, the newest Doctor, but I only know, like, the regeneration story with the toy maker. Oop. Oh, blacksmith discount! The blacksmith guild needs new tools because their old ones are nearly worn out after years of use, but they don't have the money for any. Help the guild find the funds. <laughs> Good work. With their tools, the blacksmiths are like kids with new toys, that also means they're more productive than ever, swinging away with their weapon-forging strength. And then the next one is Each Step Like Thunder. Which I assume will have Naboris, maybe? Show up? I should probably do some... Oh, I could level up your characters. And I could. What I could do is, like, try to get a bunch of money... Ooh, Master Cycle Combo. Mm. Zelda insists improved horsemanship will up her Master Cycle skills, but unruly wild horses won't let her get too close. Find something to calm them down. It seems I've grown strong. When you waft herbal aromas at Wild Horse, it calms down and starts nuzzling the princess. Zelda should be able to practice her horsemanship safely now. And now I have a... Four hit heavy combo. Fruit for the princess. Could do that. 
Ancient Threats. Really wanted me to do that one for some reason. Guardians and monsters wielding ancient weapons have appeared. Quickly defeat them while preventing damage to the nearby town. You may as well gather as many ancient materials as you can along the way. You know what? Why not? With the boys, Rivali and Link. Now I wonder what the biggest Doctor Who retcon ever was. Because there's got to be tons over the years. Like the Toy Maker was originally supposed to be the same species as the Doctor back before they defined what the Doctor was. I think the Toy Maker appeared even before they like even really conceived of Time Lords. But then, over time, he just kind of became his own thing. It's all wacky. Defeat the Malice Guardians. So very rude. Guardian Scout. <laughs> I wonder if they're ever going to actually introduce the Valyard, which was meant to be like a future regeneration of the Doctor that was evil. So they just never went into <laughs> afterwards. I think it has been so long that it would be almost, like, super hard to really justify bringing the Valyard back to a degree. Oh, darn you, game. I was trying to do that. Them both. Oh, but I thought that was gonna hit them both. Guess not. You blasted. Well, annihilate them both. Although, uh, now I wonder, like, if they would even ever dare try to bring back, um, I forget her name, but, like, the doctor's, like, either, like, niece or granddaughter that was, like, initially the, like, inciting character for Doctor Who. Like, ah, she's in school, and her teachers are like, what's going on? And then they get roped in to a wacky adventure with the doctor and the TARDIS and everything. Because, like, just overall, the Doctor's character just, uh, would be very weird if they brought her back. Ah, oh, darn it. Oh, horrible. Horrible dodging. And she's one of the few characters they reasonably could try to bring back, considering she's a Time Lord. Most of the other characters are probably, like, uh... Like, not adequately able to be Watch brought back. You don't stand a chance. Be still. Get blasted, Fire Guardian. Take this. Your weak point is annihilated. Be blasted away. I'll just annihilate you. Take out all your legs. You've lost your leg privileges. Uh, 
get stabbed. But it is just kind of interesting just how long Doctor Who has been around, even if it did take, like, a break for... Like, how long was it? Because it got stopped with the seventh Doctor, I believe. Then there was a movie that covered the eighth Doctor. And until, like, a... I forget, like, a miniseries or something? Or a series of shorts? The... Like... Eighth Doctor was only in that movie. And then they used the, like, sort series to bridge the gap to the War Doctor. Alright, you're annoying asshole. Fucking Lizalfo stunning me all over the place. Fuck off. Wow, you survived. Get poked. Lizalfos are being very fucking annoying. Watch and learn. Stunning me out of all my combos. Skabru off oh, Lizalfos. Evil. Will this annihilate him or will it survive? It looks like it'll survive. Nope, got blasted. <laughs> we got the ultimate weapon. The wooden mop. Would be funny if each character had their own, like, joke weapon. God, we're gonna just run out of any materials to be able to get rid of the rust on all these weapons. And here's a question. Which one of these three aliens would you rather choose to survive? Dalek, Cybermen, or Weeping Angels? Really, I think the only, like, reasonable answer is the Weeping Angels. But it, even then, like, it depends. Well, not really. The All of them, you're pretty screwed. But, like, at least if the Weeping Angels get you, the likelihood of them outright killing you is actually pretty low. Because the Weeping Angels want to send you back in time and take away your potential time as a, like, a food resource for themselves, so. It's basically potentially be turned into a soulless machine by the Cybermen or just outright killed. Be killed by the Daleks equally horribly. Or, uh, basically flip a coin and maybe be sent back in time if the Weeping Angels get you. And we get another Daruk special attack gauge. Some Gorons are competing to see who can ascend Death Mountain the fastest. Daruk knows the perfect climb, uh, cliff to climb, but it's pretty steep. Get some stamina boosting foods to help him out. <laughs> With stamina stop. increased, Daruk made it to the top of Death Mountain in record time. It was said that his hearty laugh carried all the way from the summit down to Goron City. But yeah, at the very least, with Weeping Angels, there's an opportunity for you to not completely die. You have a chance of survival. I think I have a decent amount of rupees. I should try and raise characters' levels up. Let's try and get to... Especially since the next story mission... Features Zelda, get her leveled up. Since you're gonna, I think, be a featured as well, get you leveled up. Come back down here and do Chief of the Dunes battle. Oh, we should read. Powerful monsters are gathering in the Gerudo Desert. Defeat them all to prove that you are the strongest warrior in this arid region. Let's see. Yeah, why not do Urbosa?
Well, yeah, it's just like nine times out of ten, the weeping angels at least aren't out to actively kill you. They still let you live nine times out of ten. It's usually when they're trying to do something out of the ordinary that they're like, eh, actually, we'll just kill you, which is just uh, not their usual modus operandi. Although, come to think of it, why would they, act, like... It, it's actually kind of weird for them to go, like, actually, we'll kill you, because you'd think that it would take more effort to, like, break somebody's neck than just yeet them into the past. But I guess if you're gonna have an episode where the angels are meant to be like, ooh, super scary, like, I guess go ahead and make them kill people. Do the weird thing of ripping out somebody's vocal cords and reanimating an aspect of their consciousness. Weeping angels are freaky. But for the average person, You'll get yeet through time, and that's basically it. Take this, Bacoblin. I don't think I've ever commented on the, like, Gerudo Desert theme. It's really good. Now I wonder, because there's the famous uh, SCP, I forget, I think, I forget what its number is, but the peanut, the statue, which is basically like a, a weeping angel, but it snaps your neck. There has to be, like, Doctor Who fan fiction where the doctor goes up against that SCP out there. There just has to be. It just seems too perfect. It's like the doctor first assumes that it's a weeping angel. And he's like, oh, oh, you're not an angel at all, are you? You're something else. Really, Doctor Who crossing over with SCP and fanfiction in general would actually be kind of neat. Blasted. Man, SCP has been around for so long now. I remember the olden days where Markiplier played the, like, really original SCP fan games. Like, I, again, I forget their, their numbers, but the stairwell one. And then Security Breach. And then it just feels like SCP fan games have tried to recapture security breach again and again security breach but it's multiplayer security breach but it's like in the unreal engine this time instead of unity or something scp-173 that's it exactly thank you chat because for a moment there I was just like is it 173 or is that a different one so i just figured ah, i'll just describe its physicalities Blasted. There's so many Bacoblins out here. And we still have to fight like a Malduga. Again, the music is just so nice. Whittle down the enemies. As they slowly become bullet sponges. What would the medieval version of a bullet sponge be? I guess an arrow sponge. <laughs> an arrow holster. In fact, 
I wonder where bullet sponge came from. I guess just like sponges soak things up. This thing is soaking up bullets like a sponge. It's probably as simple as that. But I never want to assume. For all I know, there could be a freaky thing out there called a bullet sponge that's basically an SCP itself, but real. Out there in the American wilderness, the wild bullet sponge lurks, waiting for its next meal. When last all of you, I've <laughs> been saving this, waiting for more big enemies to spawn, but you're just not, so I'll just take you all out. And I'll do it again! Oh, an incidental Malduga. <laughs> Almost a single cycle Malduga. I have been robbed from life. Oh, that's bad. Get hit, Malduga. Get blasted. I'm almost sad that all the Bacoblins aren't just ganging up on the Melduga. They're like big fish, sandfish, food. But the Melduga is just an animal. It's not even like a thing created by Ganon. Now I'm imagining a malice-infested Melduga, and that seems terrifying. I had to back up, because I didn't want a repeat of other... Oh, I summoned the ice block. Oh, I summoned it behind you, so you technically don't care. I'll freeze you to get more smacks in. Done. Almost. Gonna do another ram? Come get smacked. Time for your annihilation. Ba -da -da -da. We have defeated the Malduga. Granted, the Malduga does go up in a big bloosh, so. Maybe it is a calamity monster after all. It doesn't feel like it should be, but uh, I'm not an expert. What do I know? Again, I wonder if that sword in the loading screen, like downside, is it's like an actual sword anywhere over just random sword design some guys like I doodled this sword and like throw it in we'll make it spin around and shit Ooh. Ooh. people won't believe their eyes if they see it spin huh? And we got it. The bonus combo. Tiba certainly isn't one to neglect weapon upkeep. But come nightfall, it's too dark to perform the delicate work of bow maintenance. Perhaps a light source of some kind would help. Give him some fireflies. I haven't yet reached my peak. With the fireflies casting their glow, Tiba was able to fix up his bow even in the dead of night. Meanwhile, the luminous creatures hovered around the Rito, as if admiring his handiwork. Very neat. So what do you think of the real Daleks inside, the mutant monstrosity living in their armored tanks? If I remember correctly, I think that like uh, some older representations actually have them be, have like arms and stuff, but 
in modern day Doctor Who, having them be like melted down genetic freaks. Definitely makes them monstrous looking. Although it basically does kind of devolve them into like kind of octopusy squid kind of things. Let's see. A chef known for innovation wants to create something new. But what? He's not sure. As a first step, he wants to research something. If you bring it to him, he'll show what he learns. I have plenty of fairies. Here you go. Cook it up. Kill it. The chef failed to create a new dish to add to his repertoire. But he did learn how to harness the power of what you brought to make a strange new elixir. You can now know the recipe. Auto revive once after KO. So if you're very scared... Ah, Lanayru level 2. A lot of fish. The power of the fish. The power of the fish. Hmm. Let's see, because it's asking for Zelda, Link, and then one character of my choosing for this one. They are literally one-eyed brains with mini tentacles. He is quite freaky. I wonder how much that design was, like, made because of, like, the early, like, 2005 budget of the Revival series. Because I could see that being a possible reason. Like, ah, we don't have much of a budget. Make him look like a freaky squid. A client who wishes to be anonymous has noticed his daughter staying up late into the night, crafting armor for... someone. Worried for her health, he asks for a supply of energizing foods. Here she even builds the pants own. for him. The client's daughter completed the armor without incident and in good health. Still, he couldn't help but... W he could not help but wonder to whom she intended to give the item. Is kind of funny. Ooh, Poseidon bonus combo. The waterfall climbing class is set to take place at Lulu Lake. Poseidon is eager to give the spot a look-see, but there's a Lionel nearby on Ploymus Mountain, so he must take a stealthy approach. I won't stop there. Poseidon returned to a hero's welcome. He confirmed that Lulu Lake would be a perfect spot for the workshop after they hired a lightning wielder to defeat the Lionel, that is. Just go get Link. <laughs> or get Herbosa. It's telling a story. I like that. I. This game. This game is just so good. This game is so good. It's telling a story. By, because, oh, you did an upgrade. The next part of the upgrade story can happen. This is so good. Word has it that the Zora have enlisted Herbosa to slay a fearsome Lionel up on Ploymus Mountain. Provide something to increase her fortitude for the challenging battle ahead. Meanwhile, this is literally the first Lionel most people kill in Breath of the Wild. Unsurprisingly, the battle with the Lionel on Ploymus Mountain ended with Urbosa coming out on top. Now the Zora can practice climbing waterfalls without fear of the Lionel menace. And you know what? Let's go ahead and get this meat pie recipe as well. A budding cook is eager to try a new recipe and said that if you bring her the ingredients, she'll make it for you. Or, uh, try to. <sighs> Though new to cooking, she made a meat pie that looked scrumptious. But it seems that by make it for you, she meant get away, it's all mine! Well, you have the recipe at least. Damage up by 10%. I'd say that's a decent amount of upgrades we've done. Let's see, because what's this one again? Level 57, request from the lab. I think what I'll do is we will do another story mission. Another story mission. Each step like thunder. Now the question is, who do I want to be the bonus character? Well, apparently, Riju and Urbosa are not selectable for this, so they're going to show up. 
You know what? Yeah, let's keep it Ravali. Ravali's ballin'. But first things first, let's go see weapons, maybe. We have a decent amount of money. Since we're gonna be playing Link the most, we really should try and level up his stuff. Let's just try and find any fusion material up. Ones. Which there doesn't seem to be. Oh, wait. Actually, idea, maybe. Because Octopolish. It only costs 230, so not bad. Let's see what's in this polish. A uh, nice halberd. Not as good as the other ones. Plus, I can always sell things if I need more money. Let's see. Well, I guess I have to go to, like, specific sellers. He's a blacksmith. He doesn't want your bananas. Let's see. Let's sell a decent amount of bananas that we keep mugging the Yiga for. I've seen an episode clips on YouTube about the female doctor versus a Dalek, and they made it terrifyingly dangerous whenever it's outside their armor suit. Dangerous when outside. That's actually kind of cool. Kind of like a... Just like a neat little thing, especially since, like, we're so used to Daleks being inside their suits, making them dangerous when outside their suit. That's just that's kind of nice. Spice things up a bit. Makes it a bit more interesting. It gives them another option to do things. Now let's do some blacksmithing for Link. Okay, because we want to avoid. Well, that's a high resale, so we'll go ahead and not do that. <laughs> Decent amount of our money. Thank God. Just siphoning all my money. Mm -hmm. To level it up <laughs> once, it costs so much. Grant, I am almost doing 7,000. 7, no, almost doing. 70 damage with it, but still. Well, each step like thunder. Yeah, because I guess I added a new things to my thing, so my default, like, oh, that's where the egg is, is completely wrong. Acceptable. Quickly make sure, yep, she has her Sheikah Slate, not the Master Cycle, and even though I don't think I can change it. No, you can use the mattress cycle here. We won't, because that would just destroy the tome. <laughs> just ever so slightly destroy the tone. Working together, they successfully recaptured the citadel. Shortly thereafter, they found Robbie, who had barely escaped from the laboratory after the Yiga clan infiltrated its walls. But what happened to Pura? The party soon learned Did she set off a rune bomb, turn them all into children? escaped the laboratory, making her way to Fort Hateno in the Cluda. Ah. The stronghold, however, was besieged by enemies. This is kind of cool because, in a way, it kind of gives you an idea of what happened in the canon timeline, where it's kind of implied that Pura and Robbie were at, like, Hyrule Castle, 
and the Yiga did indeed, like, infiltrate their ranks, maybe? Or at the very least, well, that's probably not really implied, but what is implied is Robbie made his way to Akula Citadel, and that's why there's the Akula Laboratory. He was able to escape the attack on the Citadel in both timelines. Meanwhile, Pura made her way to Hatino Village instead, setting up the Hatino Laboratory. It's just neat. Link and the others departed promptly for Fort Hatino. But who Hatino. Would the ceaseless onslaught Every single word I've mispronounced. Field during this time? Oh. This is where Link normally would die. But instead, we're gonna have D Nab Von Naboris kill shit. God, there's so many guardians. How did the ancient Sheikah make so many? You needn't sound so defeated. Together, we'll put a stop to it. <laughs> but how? Look how many there are. We have a divine beast. <laughs> I would likely have died if it wasn't for your courage. But I'm still here, and the Boris still has its pilot. I'd wager nothing can stop us. We will triumph. <laughs> nothing can stand up against two exactly. Gerudo chiefs. Well then, let's begin. Will you take my hand? Rebosa's just like yes. team mom for everybody in this game. <laughs> Each step like thunder. Time for blasting. I forgot to read. <laughs> like the conversational stuff. I will not fail. Gerudo pride is at stake. <laughs> you want to try your luck? Oblivion calls for you. We're already at 5,000 KOs. If only this carried through. Link would be unstoppable with his 100 KOs. Puffs, since throwing myself into this conflict, I battled with my lack of ex- Oh, that's Riju, not Urbosa Fleck. Nonsense. I've never felt more certain that the Gerudo will thrive after I'm gone. That is the one- uh, That is most of the ones headed for Fortitino dealt with. You are a powerful ally, Riju. I hope one day I can ascend to your heights, Lady Urbosa. I will never stop trying to keep up with you. As your successor, I must not fail. Strike like a flash of lightning. Oop, more have appeared. Of course. Come on, these contraptions will not let up, so neither can we. Right, we'll do whatever is necessary to stop them. But including war crimes. We have gotten to 10,000 kills. The Guardians are swarming. It seems they recognize Von Naboris as a threat. Luckily, I'll just annihilate them all. Plus, it would be smart of them to recognize it as a threat. It's a divine beast. Long ago, my mother would tell me stories about Von Naboris as a guardian deity of the Gerudo. Naboris is named after an ancient sage, and just like the sage, it helps us fight Calamity Ganon. Huh. Named after a great sage, huh? I wonder if it's named after the sage from uh, Ocarina of Time. I really need to play Ocarina of Time. The Lady Orbosa, you are a treasure of absolute destruction. 
Oh no, there are countless guardians. Are they really taking aim at us? They can try. You are far from al alone, remember. If we persist, a path will open. You can't take on the thunder. Brilliant, Riju. One last push. Come on, Guardians. I'll take you all. You cannot afford to get bogged down. Too much is at stake. Let's go ahead and use some blaster. You fly too close to the sun. Oh, Jesus. They're descending all of the guardians. We seem to have cleaned up here. Now to press our advantage. Yes, Lady Urbosa. It's like Jesus. Take them all. Oh, you want to play funny? I'll laser beam you first. We did it. We really did it. Yes, marvelously done, Riju. You showed true courage today. Oh, only because I had your help, Lady Urbosa. Now let's go take out the remaining Guardians. The Divine Beast segments are just so good. From YouTube chat, I saw an episode clip on YouTube where a free Dalek hopped on a, man, uh, a human being and used its tentacles to hijack and mind control this person like a parasitic freak. I think I know that episode. It was more about like, ah, we need the human mind or something such. We must evolve. God, that's probably the most Guardians that have died in the entire war, right there. From Nivah Naboris. <laughs> oh, even more? Oh, stalls! Skellymans! What fun! How will lightning affect them? They're all bone. And more guardians behind them. You're not making this easy. No, they are not. We've come so far. We must persevere until the battle is done. <laughs> A buy after my own heart. You never give in, huh? <laughs> oh, Fomedo! Here is backup. Ah, and Varuta! This is cool. A united front. Where's Rudania? <laughs> All the divine beasts marching against the Calamity. Not just Ganon, but the Calamity itself! Yeah, you killed 30,000 enemies in the time it took them to get there. Bosa and Riju took control of Varnaboris, working to stem the never-ending flow of Guardians. Come to think of it, considering like Guardians were just spawning out of the spires around Hyrule Castle, I wonder if that's like literally the like mechanism that makes Guardians, and it's just like drawing resources up from the beneath the ground. 
taking advantage of the opening Obosa had provided. Link's party began their assault on the enemies surrounding the periphery of Fort Hateno. To war we go. Hmm. Princess, the way forward is too dangerous. Please try avoid doing anything reckless. Then Link follows Ravali. So if I place anyone, they'll all go. I'm going. You cannot stop me. Now then, we must aid the soldiers who are in trouble. We're not going down that easy. A guardian army is approaching. Fortitino is an inch away from falling. There isn't a moment to lose. Dang it. I'm gonna fire Lionel too. Do not give up. We are on our way. That's a move. It's no use. We're goners, aren't we? like a normal moblin without any weapons. Just utterly wrecking people up here. <laughs> fine, fine. Rude. Okay. Back off. Back off. <laughs> Asshole, Octorok. Octoroks are so annoying. Out of the way, the goblins. Just the report said this is a challenging situation. Princess, this outpost is doomed! Please make your escape before it's too late! Never. I will do my part no matter the cost. Watch and learn. You stand a chance. If I do this, I'll probably jump onto Link. Take out the enemy down there. Away with you, electric moblin! No, you don't, Lionel man. Only downside is then I can't use my stasis rune to get more bonus damage on you. Now at least we're back in the fort. Not being pushed out anymore. Just taking all my runes, aren't you? Very rude. Blast him. 
Blast him. Blast him away. How do you even imbue the elements into these guys? Flurry rush time! <laughs> This should, I probably won't even break your weak point. You're just going to die from this. Oh, thanks for your help. And then guardians are starting to smack at the gate. Oh, just destroy the gate. An explosion. Was that the guardian from before? It sounds like Katino is in danger. Watch and learn. Guardian, I will take you out. You stand a chance. Be still. Too easy. The power of Rito Warrior. That one. I'll just annihilate you. Goodbye, Ice Guardian. I don't think I ever ran into an elemental guardian in my actual playthrough. Man, it must be horrifying just being a normal soldier on this battlefield. Rampaging guardians. Freaky skeletons. There is no peace on this battlefield. You can go down there. Oh, I, yeah, I'm just going to preempt that uh, super attack I was running into. Stand down, princess, I beg you. We can't stand down. We have things to kill. I'm just waiting for those other, like, freaky things to actually activate those uh, other forts of evil. How about you stop that, Thunder Guardian? Eh, <laughs> get flurry rush, idiot. So many guardians. Be still. Get you open yourself up to weakness. Blind guardian. Take you out. And I'll go ahead and blast you. Go ahead and blast you too. You stand a chance. Get out of here, Guardian Fool. Quickly, must hurry and save those within the fort. I mean, I think. Is it better? Are they actually being attacked in there? 
So I thought we'd stop them at the gate. From YouTube chat, is Rivali your main in this? I think split between Rivali and Link. Those are the ones that. Oh, great, it's Aster. Shit. Your thread will be cut here, your highness. Yeah, those are the two that I think I'm most proficient at and good at getting one turn weak point obliterations on. Now we get to fight. Oh, he summoned the Blights. That's fun. I thought we were going to fight <laughs> like a Blight Link. Now this is even worse, because last time Link got overwhelmed by just a bunch of guardians. Now he has to fight all four Blights at the same time. I overpowered Link in this. He one-taps most. He is very, very good. A good baseline. And all the Blights are working to defend each other. That's bad. I must act. Da, 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 da. Actually, come to think of it, this is actually a really cool way of, like, adding this in. Because it took her seeing Link basically die to awaken this last time. Here, she already saw her father die. So, about to see Link, her dear friend, go down against horrible odds. Like, yeah, that would really, really help. You did it, Zelda. Uh, that light, it looks like... No. No! Awaken, Blight Ganons. Consign that wretched princess to oblivion! Monsters are in pain? Princess, could it be? We must strike now. Don't allow them to regroup. It's time to eradicate them from all of Hyrule. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> that was tip top, Princess. You gave it 110%, didn't ya? Pura, you're all right. Okay, but now we definitely need to, let's see. Link follows Rivali. Rivali follows the princess. Princess follows Link. I say princess, it's Zelda. <laughs> the surge is not over yet. More guardians are headed this way. <laughs> oh, now it's time to split up. All right, Link. You head to those. Rivali, you head up there. And Zelda, I send you down here. Fine, fine. <laughs> fine, fine. As it happens, I'm prepared. I probably got to read that. Those outpost coin monsters, I need to take them back and secure the devices there. Understood. We'll recapture the outposts, everyone. Let's divide and conquer. Exactly. I love the music in this game. So good. It's my time. Oh, hey, Fire Guardian. Well, let me just blow you up. Watch and learn. You stand a chance. Be still. Time for the true combo. My favorite combo in the entire game. Good going. Now that's done and dusted, you can activate the device. 
once these treasure chests are out of the way. Right. Yep, that's it. Also, we don't have any spares, so be very gentle. Monsters are out in force. Let's be on guard so that Fortino does not fall. Get blasted. Learning the new combos of the princess, though. Takes a bit. But yeah, this is kind of just like... <laughs> what Zelda was doing at the end of Breath of the Wild, wasn't she? Get flurry rushed, idiot! I've been on point with those today! <laughs> that there's a modified Guidance Stone, capable of amplifying ancient energy from the ground. It's for my research, but if we use it wrong in just the right way, we'll overload their systems. I lost my laser beams. Report! Multiple guardians are making their approach from dueling peaks! Leave the guardians to me. Focus on recapturing the uh, <laughs> on the outposts and on defense. Even if Anna Boris is faint, there's still so many. I hope Lady Orbosa is alright. And Link to get that white maned lino. And I'll blast you away. You stand a chance. Be still. Back to my favorite combo. Finally got a flurry rush on you. You're gonna take a bit to kill because you're a white maned Lionel, aren't you? Well, that's bad. Oh, we dodged you anyway. Please die quickly so I can go intercept more guardians. There we go. Hey there, guardian. You thought you were gonna do things? I forget. Haha! <laughs> Take that, idiot! been a bit since I've done that. Felt good to do. God, just fighting enemies is so good in this game. Think. Almost had a flurry rush there, but then again, the, my preferred combo is always good. Ugh, somebody help! Don't worry. Ravali's on his way. Then again, it must be horrifying fighting just an army of skeletons as just a normal Hylian soldier. Not to mention you fight him. You destroy the body, the head starts floating at you. Oh, and there's two in here. Everyone, charge! You stand a chance. Be still. Yeah, you're the more dangerous one, so I want to get you down. 
There we go. Two down. Obliterated. All right, we'll send you down to that. You don't get to do spinny spins. Much illegal. Send you after the other. I'll just take you down with bombs. Since you're on my way. Goodbye. Yeah, this is just so good. I really, really love the story in this game. It definitely helps that it's based off of, like, uh, Breath of the Wild with everything. And then it's just fanfic in just the best possible way. Like, compare this to, like, uh, the other Hyrule Warriors story. Like, it was fine, but the fact that this is, like, the Breath of the Wild characters you know and love, it just hits so much harder. Go and hit that Silver Moblin. Hit you with that, you fool. Blast him! I'll take them both out. <laughs> it's only bombs that matter now, all else is trivial. I don't know. I find stasis to be very good. Helps secures the kills. Hyrule, she says, as she rains down the power of the goddess. Get blasted. It's so unique. Just getting to play as like a new basically weapon set mid mission. It's just so cool. We've successfully secured this device. Now we just need to address the final one. Well, that's not good. <laughs> For Hyrule nukes the enemies with the power of Hyrule. Exactly. Okay. I based the device off tech inside your tiny automaton. Remember, it's a one-time only gambit. Dang it. I will destroy you for your evils. Girl, we've completed our task with this. The Guardians will... Send everyone down. They're not shutting down. Why aren't they shutting down? Uh, maybe there's interference. So they might be jamming the device's power supply. I'll head for the lab, lab and try rebooting them. Moving across the battlefield is a death sentence. Let's escort Pura. The 
especially with so many monsters on the field. Oh, gears and screws, something is coming. Oh, Thunder Blight has appeared. Get bombed. The monster, there must have been more. I bet that's why the devices are on the fritz. Hurry up and get rid of these bozos. All right, I can keep going. <laughs> and now you're the one doing the torch run. That's hilarious. They had to put this in the game. It's only true to Breath of the Wild. I like when the game uses the phrase death sentence. It usually means fun. Especially if you're high enough level. And you don't have to worry about anything. When you're strong enough, death sentence basically does just mean, oh boy, a challenge. Wind blight, huh? I'll take you down for what you did to me. Just as I thought, they're gumming up the works. You stand a chance. A horde of guardians is headed this way. Try me. Be still. Goodbye, Wind Blight. I've grown surpassing you. Uh, yeah, that's what they're f messing from my lab. Thanks for busting them. Oh, bro, you're always speaking nonsense. Yeah, yeah, put the lecture on ice, will ya? It's time to see what my toys can do. Unless this just annihilates them since I got them really, really hit out. Since I got Perot there fast, maybe she'll just annihilate them all. Except in the one-hit trials. That's true. <laughs> Death sentence is more literal there. And now the blighted malice guardians are like, what's going on? Get magic, idiots. The guardian and the allies have stopped moving. A smashing success. And luckily our little buddy here is still up and running. He is a very special little guy. However, the effect is temporary. If you get close to the Guardians, they'll attack, so don't. Why not get close to them anyway? So that they're dead. There's no use lingering. Let's use this time to withdraw, hmm? <gasps> Report, an unusual Guardian has appeared on the plane, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Should have known it wouldn't be so simple. Well, good luck hacking and slashing all. Pura out. Go ahead and annihilate them so that we can then take down the Blight Malice Guardian. Like the truly Malice Guardian. Plus, just taking these things out removes them out of the equation. Now we don't have to worry about it. Hello, Malice Guardian. It also showed up in Oculus Citadel. Yeah, I can't, uh, I don't think I can deflect that as Revali. Calamity Ganon's power at work. Even ancient energy's no match for that malign influence. It seems it's heading for Fort Hatino. We must stop it before it enters the fort. Although I think that's pronounced... Hey, Tino. I keep messing up the pronunciations of it all. Blast it, Link. Do your job. It's over, isn't it? Yep, I can attack, so it is indeed over. No, until we can seal the Calamity Ganon, there'll be no rest for us. from YouTube chat. I thought the intro cutscene to this game was the best I've ever seen. It is pretty good. 
No idea what I I would learn, rank my like best like uh buh, 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 intro cutscene. But this one does it really well. Plus it just looks really, really good. At least Tatino. Hey Tino. Everyone. Oh, Get she's addressing up. the forces. For like the first time. With Calamity Ganon now awakened. Here we stand. At the threshold of the unimaginable. Despite that, we must not give in to defeat. We must not despair. We must stand and fight. Hyrule wields the divine beasts and their champions. We wield we the champions the like swords. The sword will seal the darkness. And we shall strike with you. You brave soldiers. Everyone. You are mine to lead now. Calamity Ganon. We'll be sealed away forever. Power I possess. That's actually a really good speech because she has the power to show him. <laughs> strength, we begin our march. Hyrule's fight to rescue all within it is now. And wonderful music as well. For some reason, kind of reminds me of, like, the first and second Pokemon movies. The trumpets, at least. Why is Link not with well, you? Well, then, what did you want to tell me? <gasps> Super jump! Yeah, because last we saw you, you escaped Aster, I guess. <laughs> huh? I guess he's going to tell him that Aster betrayed them. Then again, what do you expect for following Calamity Ganon? I know you resented the, Hy the Hyrule family because they're like, eh, stop the technology. And the Yuga clan split off like, no, we'll keep the technology. And resented the other Sheikah. But what'd you expect when it comes to Calamity Ganon? It's Calamity Ganon. It's not going to differentiate like, oh, you helped me. I won't destroy you. Oh, we just don't get a cutscene for him so far, I guess. Master Koga, top banana of the Yiga clan, the chief of the Yiga clan and a uniting force for his unwavering followers. He leaves all tasks, save napping, to his underlings. He works at the Hyrulean army to get revenge for his fallen friends. Neat. And a, just a whole bunch more. Whole bunch more. Icons. Icons galore. So many icons. Now we have Koga on the team. From YouTube chat, Koga voices top tier. Thank you. Just like his character. He is a very funny character. Got bonus combos, bonus combos. Galore. Master Koga plans to use an ancient training method in order to achieve his truest, manliest form. The exercise involves leaping over obstacles so to avoid injury. He needs something floaty. I don't think that's really training, that's cheating the test. Now I'm even more charming, you know? <laughs> Bounding up and down with octo balloons, Master Koga achieved astonishing heights. He even thought of a special move to take advantage of his new buoyant physique. Unleash a big glowy blast when at high stress. That's hilarious. 
Master Koga plans to take a hot bath so he can boil away every particle of imperfection and achieve his truest, manliest form. Uh, but he needs something to fend off dizziness. And a cool drink! But where's Suga? Where's the boy? Master Koga worked up a good sweat soaking in that hot water, and then enjoyed a nice, refreshing glass of milk. Ah, <sighs> one step closer to perfect manliness! And of course this one has a ton. <laughs> I, w I want, I want, absolutely, absolutely, for one of Koga's upgrades to just be 100 Mighty Bananas. That must be done. Suga's in DLC. Yeah. I was more token like, uh, like storyline-wise, because last we saw, both Koga and Suga were staring down Blight Link, and now only Koga is there. <laughs> Master Koga plans to eat ice cubes so he can harden his body and spirit and achieve his truest, manliest form. Uh, but he needs warm stuff to settle his stomach and syrup to flavor the ice. Am I even allowed to be this strong? <laughs> Master Koga could feel his body and spirit hardening, but he could also feel an uncomfortable churn in his stomach. Ah! Perhaps he shouldn't have mixed cold ice of warm ingredients. Oh, and then there was like... A new stall up here. Merchant arrives and earn recipe for Akala buns. A stable owner has shut down his stable because of his wedding. That is, because he's having a galloping case of jitters about the whole thing. Find something to calm him down. <laughs> Koga keeps getting manlier. But we're but we all know that his Yiga clansmen would say that he was already peak manly. Thanks to the soothing nature of the field herbs, the stable owner was able to calm down and look forward to the big day. He re reopened his stable too. And now <laughs> Hakala buns. Horrifying thing, apparently. Crunchy outside, soft inside, a specialty of East Akala, so these buns won't keep long. Yeah, they look it. Let's see. Increases strength of de-rusted weapons. That'd be nice. Glance around. Have a new Tiba bonus combo. Oh, that's a mission! Ooh, those would be nice to do. Let's see. The Rito are on a training mission in the Hebra Mountains. But since they ran through their supply of rations, it hasn't been going well. Maybe Link ought to trek up there with some supplies. <laughs> this is definitely Rivali. He's like, come on, Link. Go do a thing. My peak. After eating their fill, the Rito could focus much better on their training. Rumor has it that the day ended with an epic mock battle led by Tiba and a certain Hylian courier. Booyah. I really should play Tiba. It's been a bit. From YouTube chat. So, you know the other Time Lord characters besides the Doctor, such as, like, River Song and the Master, a.k.a. the Mistress? Yes, indeed. Although not much about... I, although I think she goes by Missy, I think. But I don't know too, too much about them. Again, I haven't watched the Peter Capaldi era. And I think that's when Missy comes in. And I don't know too much. But the Master... Throughout all the appearances I've seen, he's so... He's a fun time. A very fun time. But other than that, I don't think I've really seen that many other... Time Lords. Like, <laughs> River Song kind of, sort of, doesn't count because of her whole story arc. <laughs> really, she's mostly... Like, aside from, like, a single episode, she's pretty much just... Time Traveler with her own weird backstory. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Earn recipe for seafood balls. And then discount in East Hyrule. Hell yeah. Travelers won't cross Floria Bridge because Farosh flies through every now and then. Bring supplies that will help travelers keep safe on this bridge crossing. Ah, so other people can see the dragon. 
thanks to your supplies and support, word got out that Floria Bridge is safe to cross. Merchants are now able to roam Eastern Hyrule more freely, which will help the region flourish. A fisherman born in Lurelin Village wants to introduce you to its signature dish, but he needs one more ingredient. He'll teach you the recipe if you can find that for him, and I have a hundred, so take him. The fisherman grilled the fish and then rolled it up in steaming Hylian rice. What a clever little recipe, and what great big flavor. Now the secret of making seafood rice balls is yours. Shikarun damage plus 35. Nice, nice. Just glancing around. Let's see. Honeyed fruits. Let's see. Yeah, I'll take a bit to stock up on those. To get the honeyed fruit. Glancing around for other, like, super big upgrades that I might be missing. It's just like, there's so many icons now. And there's just, like, a decent. a new set of. blah blah blah. Divine Beast missions that we'll definitely need to do. Ah. Oh, now we can go do the. Special attack upgrade. Ravali plans to lead some Rita warriors on a glide across Hyrule, crossing the entire kingdom from west to east. Fetch some rations to increase their stamina for the long journey ahead. <laughs> I've outdone myself. The Rito completed their journey across Hyrule. Word has it when most of the Rito, exhausted from days of travel, stopped to rest. The tireless Ravali did laps gliding around the camp. I could see it. He's an overachiever like that, and we all love him for it. But we just have so many quests now. So many quests. Oh, we gotta do this. The Blacksmith Guild believes that there are more weapon derusting secrets to be learned from Rock Octorox, and that studying them in their habitat could lead to a better method. Find out. After you brought back materials from Rock Octorok habitats, the guild improved its de-rusting method even more. Now you can revive rusty weapons even better. There's so many. But I do believe that that will be that for now. We've been going for over three hours. There's lots to do. But there's so many upgrades. First, first of all, I guess we'll keep going until we run out of upgrades that I want to do. Then we'll <laughs> we'll end. There's just so many, so many upgrades. That way I can do grinding if I want to. A young Rito is training day and night to defend Rito Village. His father plans to reward his son's efforts with a present, but he'll have to be stealthy to avoid spoiling the surprise. I haven't yet reached my peak. The Rito was able to surprise his son with a wonderful present. Watching the two of them tearfully embrace even stoic Tiba had a glimmer in his eye. I have to remember, it's Tiba, not Teba. The Rito have asked you to help them train for the decisive battle against Calamity Ganon. Before you depart for Rito Village, pack some materials to ensure the exercise goes smoothly. I refuse to be anything less With than plenty capable. of resources at their disposal, the Rito training exercises were a great success. In return for your aid, they committed to providing additional help in the decisive battle. What was that that I just saw? That... What was that Street Fighter combo thing? Zelda? What is your combo? Luminescent XY CL plus B. I guess those are just different attacks. So yeah, they're not actual combos. You can attack with X, with Y, with ZL plus B, ZL plus X, and ZL plus Y. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll need to remember that. <laughs> Just 
glance around for any upgrades. Flail bonus combo. Some studies of swordplay want new wooden training swords to help them practice copying weapons with a flail. Gather materials to help them out. <laughs> the students use your materials to craft new wooden swords. They can now practice using the flail to copy weapons many times without them breaking. Join the fun sometime. Guess I'll add that because we'll want to do that. But let's get some bonus hearts. Why do you need so many guts, Zelda? Lately, Zelda has spent all day and night working in her study. Well, this is in the past because the castle's destroyed. Her waiting maid says that the princess is yearning for certain hard-to-find research samples. I refuse to be anything less than capable. With the rare monster parts on hand, Princess Zelda's research progressed by leaps and bounds. Who knew that such dangerous materials would turn out to be so useful? Probably Zelda. She's smart like that. But now, maybe... Ah, you know, bow bonus combo. Oh, and a... Ah, oh, bow of light bonus combo. Even better. You decide to pay the Gorons a visit to help them prepare for the calamity. Before you set off, gather materials that the soldiers might need to use to reinforce their equipment. With the materials you collected, the Gorons were able to reinforce their armor. Thanks, buddy. Now we can help even... Well, I guess I should do a Goron voice for this, I suppose. Thanks, buddy. Now we can help even more when that big battle against Calamity Ganon kicks off. My Goron voices are all over the place, methinks. Even my Daruk voice. It's not really all that consistent, but at the same time, it's definitely Daruk. A Link special attack gauge! Hell yeah. <laughs> he needs all those mighty bananas. Link has been called out. Uh, called out? Oh no, not on the Twitter.com. Link has been called to take on the Knight's Gauntlet, a punishing trial that pushes even the most capable soldiers to their limits. He cannot afford to neglect strengthening his body. <laughs> the Knight's Gauntlet was grueling. But thanks to the fortifying foods Link had eaten, he passed to flying colors. The instructor crooned, truly you are a knight among knights. Let's get a Yanobu bonus combo. A Goron architect has been summoned to Hebra to help with fort repairs. Might be a long trip, he says. Sure hope I don't get hungry on the way. Bring him a snack for the road. Did that just say ten diamonds? Bringing along his snack lunch, packed with ore, the architect did a superb job fixing up the fort in Hebra. In fact, he finished the job ahead of schedule. And amber earrings. Elden level two. We'll never want for salt again. Now we can do the modest collection. The princess has awakened her sealing power. You'd like to celebrate, without going too wild right before the pivotal battle, of course. Find some common ingredients for a modest feast. I refuse to be anything less than capable. The party for Princess Zelda was a sensation, abounding with great food and a lively conversation. Everyone left feeling energized, even the princess appearing to be in high spirits. Oop, and then we can do an Impa bonus combo. I'll take all my money. The farmers at Kakariko Village are worried they won't be much help when the time comes to take up arms. Chip in for a dojo where they can learn the art of self-defense. New power. With plenty of rupees to make up for their deficit in funds, the farmers built the Kakariko Dojo. Soon Impa coached them to battle monsters without fear. We'll come down here and see Urbosa's special attack gauge. A renowned nail artist has come to Gerudo Town hoping to impart her methods to the local Vi. 
you've been asked to find something nail-like that could be used for practice. The most horrifying nails in all of, all of the land. The nail artist's classes led to a boom in fingernail painting. With bright colors adorning everyone's fingers, the mood of the entire town seemed brighter. And then Urbosa bonus hearts. The people of Gerudo Town plan to host a summer breeze festival where folks can find respite from the searing desert heat. Gather something to help the attendees cool off. Locals and tourists alike were drawn to the Summer Breeze Festival, where they gathered together to bask in the cool air. Their fatigue seemed to simply flutter away in the wind. I think that'll be that for now. We'll definitely do lots of grinding, get materials and money, so we can prepare, so we can definitely do the... Uh, just do everything. We'll even... If I get enough rupees, I can try to power level everybody to do the EX memories as well. There's just so much opened up. So much to do. But that shall be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I try to stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then if you want more things from me, my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicywings, or directly linked in the various descriptions, link places, and bios of the site, it holds everything that I really do on the internet, like my edited content YouTube channel I'm making scripts for, and then I need to dread the editing process, bleh. And then my streaming YouTube channel, where all these streams end up after the fact as VODs, as well as my streaming Twitch, so if you want to catch me live on either YouTube or Twitch, depending on your preference, you can. Else, in my link tree are links to places where I upload art, similar to my little character in the corner, as well as my end slate. Various art sites and social medias I upload art to, as well as some sites that I upload some writing to, because writing is fun. I need to do more of that. Stories are good. And the final link, as always, is my Patreon, the glorified donation bucket for the extraordinarily kind. But yes, but yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Just remember, be you, be true, be happy, but most importantly, be kind and stay hydrated. And thank you for spending your time with me. Bye. Bye.